sorting out your finance dilemmas. We've got Dave Fishwick is back. Banker Dave, as he's also known. Banker Dave. Uh, so many calls. As you can imagine, Dave, at the moment, you know, people really worried about money. Um, and Margaret says, I'm 71, retired, a single homeowner with no mortgage. I want to raise enough money to do repairs on my house. However, I was thinking of releasing equity. This is a big thing for yeah, lots of people, is. isn't it? And they're very nervous about it. But I can't, as my house is valued under the threshold of them offering these types of deals. I can't borrow, so I'm on a basic pension. How could I budget for the repairs I need to do to my house? Well, I think Margaret... Good morning, Margaret. And the thing is, don't worry too much about it, because there's lots of ways. You can actually go online and go to specialist finance brokers. That's what my David H will be saying now. He's the old-fashioned bank manager that, that works for me at the Bank of Dave. Uh, my right-hand man, I need to say, go online, go to the specific financial brokers, there'll be tons of them. Tell them the situation. How do you know that they're legit? Like, how yeah. do you find them? Well, to be honest, they have to be FCA regulated. That's what you've got to and look out for. very, very quick to do that. You go on the FCA website, and if the FCA regulated, they have a certain amount of rules. Just like I'm mm. FCA regulated, I've got loads and loads of rules to adhere by. And that's what I'd like to get across to Margaret. Also, Margaret, if you've got a car or you've got something else that you can borrow against, that is another option of raising finance. It's not just on the house itself. So you've lots of different ways you well, can so do like that. What's like other assets that you yes, have? Mm. Yes, yes. Do you borrow against a car? Yeah, can you can you? refinance. It's something that... You, People do all the time. Because if somebody comes to me for a, uh, a business loan, for, for instance, at Bank of Dev, and we say, OK, you know, it's a new business, lots of problems, but I like what you do. Because we, we lend to people who can't borrow from the high street bank. And then we'll say to them, right, have you got something else? Because then they've got skin in the game, Ruth. And once they've got skin in the game, mm. then they're going to pay you back. So if yeah. they've got a car or something, we'll chuck that in as equity. Yeah. So you lend yeah. against the car and a bit extra as well. Money makes money, doesn't it? That's right. And I think Margaret might be able to do the same. I hope, that, I hope that's helpful to you, Margaret. Definitely. I hope you get that sorted. Uh, well, we said we've got a load of calls coming in, Dave. I think we should get to one. Let's head to Cheshire. Sam, are you there? Yeah, hiya. Morning, Sam. Hi, Sam. Lovely to speak to you. Uh, Sam, I think you've got a really good question here. Um, you're talking about keeping your savings in the bank or paying off the mortgage. Is that what you're looking to do? Yeah, with the interest rates going up and bills rising, I was just wondering which would be the better thing to do. Um, mm. We're lucky enough to have savings, so do we pay off the mortgage, which is quite low, or do we keep them in an interest account? It's a good question, Dave. It's a really good question. Sam, good morning. Can good morning. you tell me what your interest rate is? Do you know what it is, Sam? Uh, it's about three at the minute, something around there. It's 3%. Right. Well, the first thing I would tell you to do is, first, get all your accounts out and look at everything you're spending. And look at what your credit card bills are, because your credit card bills might be an awful lot more than 3%. You might have loans that are an awful lot more than 3%. So the first things first is... Get rid of all the loans that's more than 3%. And if you have any money left then... How do you get rid of them? Pay, pay them off. Pay them off. Pay them off. Yes. Because okay. you can negotiate a deal. When you're okay. in a finance company, you can negotiate a deal to settle. Oh, right. So yeah. if you've got, say, credit card bills of 10 or 12% APR and your mortgage is 3%, you want to be paying the credit card bills yeah. off first. Yeah. So that's the first thing. So pay the credit card bills off. Pay your loans off, look at absolutely everything else, and once you've got to, to, to everything that's above the 3%, then you can pay something off your mortgage as well. But don't use all your cash, because cash yeah. is a little bit like oxygen. You don't know it's not there until it's not, and then you need it, and then it's really hard to borrow it back out. Like we've just been speaking to Margaret, it's very difficult to borrow that money back out. So leave a bit spare, pay the big yeah. bills first, then pay off the mortgage. Thank you, Dave. Sam, Brilliant. I hope that's helped Thank you, you out. Good. Thank you, Sam. Thanks, Sam. See you later, Sam. Uh, Julie's written into it. She said, my son is 19. He's now been working full-time for a year. However, he won't stop spending mm. his wages. <laughs> Do that when you're 19, <laughs> don't you? I keep telling him that he needs to be more financially proactive, but he doesn't seem to care about setting up his future. How can I help him start to learn to save? I have to say, Julie, I understand now as a mother Jack. where you're coming from. When I was 19, I'd go, oh, boring. Yeah, God, man, you know. Boring. Well, the first thing I would do with him is... If, if 
for if she's giving him money or if she's helping him out each month, he's got no incentive yeah. to stop spending. So the first thing's first. Well, stop she says he's working. Money. He is yes. working full time. But if she's also topping that yeah. up with wages, okay. mm -hmm. then he's not going to have too many problems spending because yeah. my mum's there for overdraft facility. Yeah. What she could do is charge him a bit of interest. <laughs> 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 so each time he takes some money each month, charge him a bit of interest, and he'll very quickly learn. But that, that money goes quicker than he's going. There you go. How could she persuade him to say, look, it's great that you're working full time. Of course, you want to enjoy your money and spend a bit. But you just even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just like ten pounds a month, mm. put it into a savings account. How could she kind of say that without them going boring? Well, she could shock him into it. You could do something along the lines of an S&P 500 tracker index. And if you put, it's a vanguard, you can find them. It's a very, very low, um, low amount of fees. And uh, you put a little bit in that each month over 30, 40 years, which is taking to when he's in his 60s, mm. that would be hundreds and hundreds of thousands of pounds. The S&P 500 tracker index with compound interest would make a colossal difference to 90% of people's lives. Wow. It's done by Vanguard. It's done um, by the community, for the community, if you will. It's not run by a big organisation that's trying to make loads of profits. The money goes back into the... So uh, she needs to show him that. She needs say, to look, show it. Put £10 now... £10 a week now yeah. will become hundreds of thousands of pounds in 35, 40 years. And next time I'm on, I'll bring a chart yeah. and I'll I'd show exactly that. how that works. <laughs> because I think that would help tons and tons of people out there. Yeah. Definitely. And show them what they could buy with it. Exactly. Whenever. Definitely. Okay. Definitely. Hope that helps, Julie. Thanks, Julie. Uh, Mary's on the line now. Morning, Mary. Morning. Hello, morning. Oh, hi. Um, where is the best place to keep a large sum of savings, you're asking? Um, you've got savings of how much? Round about 50,000. Round about 50,000. All right. I mean, this is quite a key question as well. Do you put it in your current account? Do you put it in a savings account? What do you do, Dave? Just well, the normal current account. It's in your current yeah. at the moment. Yeah. I bet you're not getting a great deal of money from that either, are you, no. interest-wise? No. So the, the problem with banks is, especially big banks, they, uh, they tend to give people nothing and then lend it out at a fortune. And you just wonder, the middle bit, where does that go? Mm. Yeah. <laughs> people who run banks are to prison, but banks who run people get paid bonuses. <laughs> but anyway, that's another subject. That's Bank of Dave talk. Mm. So um, I think what I would do is first, same again, I would look at all your bills. I would look at first getting rid of any debt. Any debt that's going to be more than what you're getting in the bank, and you're probably not getting anything in the bank. But I'd also look at just what I've just talked about there in the S&P 500, not with it all, but with a piece of it. You could also go into government bonds and things. Is this like premium bonds and stuff like no, that? Well, I, I don't, don't really understand what well, all that is. No, government bonds is, is, is government-backed money. It's right. safe, isn't it? Yes, You're not yes. going to lose your money. That's right. You see, people think, I own the bank of Dave and I sell buses. That's what people think, because they, that, that, they see me on the telly doing that. And, and it's exactly what I do. But I've also got the biggest company I've got in America. I have an investment company in America. I've had it for a very, very long time, and I'm self-taught. And if a lad from Burnley who's got no qualifications whatsoever can self-teach yourself mm. to be building an high street bank, then anybody can self-teach themselves about investments. Absolutely. So it's really important. I think people are worried about losing it. Yeah, yeah they're scared. They're and they're right scared. Don't they? But there are some things out there where it's, there isn't a risk with your money. Yes, there? yes. There's lots of things that's risky, and, and you've got to understand that you've got to be able to afford to lose it if you start going into those risky things like options trading and things, betting on the futures, credit default swaps. That's what big banks do. But Stay Mary, away from them. But for Mary, but government for Mary, bonds. But for Mary, government bonds, little bit in the S&P, 500 index and look to maybe put it away for a while and you'll get a slightly better interest rate so take out the bit you need put some away for a while for a rainy day you'll get a little bit of better interest rate there but government bonds lovely does that help mary thank you very much you're, you're very welcome. welcome you take care look after that money thank you uh lastly let's head to michelle uh how can i spread financial education to others so basically michelle says she's been giving financial awareness workshops to a variety of age groups which have always gone down really really well uh, she worked in banking for 15 years prior to her teaching career she's covered all the areas tax borrowing bank accounts apr all of that but she's now wondering if there is anything else she should include and how to get the info across to a broadening market right which well, is, I suppose, what you're doing. Yeah. Well, we, we teach it, really. I mean, I get students and things come over to Burnley Library and we go upstairs and I teach a little bit about finance and, 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 and money. They should be and, doing that in schools. Yeah. yeah. But I've, I've got no qualifications and, and, and I'm not a teacher. 
and but I've done it. I you know, wish I, you were. I think yeah. you'd be a great teacher. I'd love you to be. My <laughs> oh, but come and take us go out. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've built businesses, and I think when I do a bit of teaching about business and things, um, it, it's a little bit like getting in an aeroplane with somebody that's read all the books, watched all the DVDs, but they never actually took off. And a lot of teachers teach. But they haven't actually run a business, run a business, yeah. or, or done it for real. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I just think that sometimes you can. So I go, I go up into the library, and um, and, I, and I teach. And I think that this is what this lady could do. Um, I really want you to talk about APR to them, annual percentage rates, and explain to them when anybody who's watching today who's thinking about taking a loan, you'll get lots of jargon. Sieve right the way through it. First thing to do is look at how much you're borrowing. So if you're borrowing, say, three thousand pounds for a car. Ask the person that's giving you the loan, whether it's a, a bank, a building society, whoever, ask them how much do you pay back at the end. Don't worry too much about the interest rates and things because there'll be lots of fees in and out. How much do you pay back? So if it's £3,000 and you pay back £600 in interest, it's £3,600. Divide that by each year. That is what you pay back. You don't have to worry about interest rates. And another thing I want Michelle to do is please, please, please tell your... Um, your your kids and the people that you're teaching all about payday loans. They prey on the poor and vulnerable. Yeah. I did a series about it and I got Wonga shut down. Um, well done. And it was a very, very intense documentary. And I saw well, gee, what they do. You don't hear about that no yeah. more, do you? Yeah. It's, uh, it, it really is a big problem. So please Matthew. educate the kids and everyone else. Stay away from payday loans. Dave, yeah. thank you so thank much. You, Dave. Honestly, I think you're going to help quite a lot of people. And where can people find you if they want to get in touch? Uh, at Fishwick David yeah. on Twitter. They can find me on TikTok, at Bank of Dave, or they can just Dave from Burnley. Find you down Google. the street. <laughs> well, there down. I come. Find you in the library. Find you in the library. Dave, thank you so much thank for coming. You, thank, you thank you, Dave. Thank you very much. Thank you. Really good stuff. And thank you very much yeah. for all your questions. Thank you. For Dave. Uh,